thank you for inviting me to talk um, here today. Um, I'm Dan Goldston from San Jose State University. Um, I'm going to talk about prime numbers and some of the new advances that have occurred in the last couple years on primes. It's an exciting time to do primes. Um, so the first problem I wanted to answer is um, why are primes popular? Um, and this is something that's Pop, primes are popular both for mathematicians and for the public, unlike a lot of areas of math, because primes, first off, are pretty simple. They're easy to define. Everyone understands them. They're easy to compute. Um, you, can, you can look for patterns in them. And they're not really threatening the same way that C star algebras are or um, Poincaré conjecture. So. Um, um, Another advantage of primes is that with um, a computer, you can actually look for patterns that no one's ever looked for before, and you can do it cheaply and easily. So they're easily studied, and you can gather all sorts of information if you um, just use your computer. Um, and of course, primes have some famous old problems, um, like the twin prime conjecture, the Goldbach conjecture, and um, there's also the Riemann hypothesis, which actually is a conjecture concerned with primes, and it um, also has a million dollar reward for its solution. So primes um, are appealing both to mathematicians and to the public. Um, now what do you get when you study primes? What do they give back to you? And this is a little different between mathematicians and the public. For mathematicians, I think the appeal is that they're hard, and they often provide really amazingly interesting proofs that aren't easily obtained. Sometimes it takes 100 years to prove something about primes. And it's also a field where there's no danger of ever killing it off by overdoing it and solving everything. We're going to have questions on primes around for thousands of years, I believe. Um, primes also have a long history. There's a lot of um, um, work that's been done on it. There's an extensive literature. Um, so they, they have a lot of interesting scholarship type like things. Another thing about primes is that they, um, there's a lot of applications to all sorts of other fields, mathematical and non-mathematical. So there's always interest in primes for their applications. Um, and finally, um, primes do teach mathematicians humility. Um, they may not be hum humble, but they have lots of experience with humiliation since they often can't solve these problems. It's sort of par for the course to fail to solve the, a lot of problems on primes. And finally, of course, if you're a real professional mathematician, um, you get a job too. And it may not be doing prime numbers, but it's usually um, something related to mathematics like teaching calculus or stuff. So um, what about for amateurs? What do they give back to amateurs? And here, um, it's a little more mixed. There are a lot of amateurs, and um, we do come in contact with them, who um, are mainly interested in becoming famous. And unfortunately, it's pretty hard for an amateur to become famous, because it's pretty hard to solve any of these problems. And typically, um, the amateur who's mainly interested in fame will discover some pattern on primes which won't actually help you prove anything, but they think it will. And then they'll end up wasting a lot of time on this, and then wasting a lot of other people's time. And finally, they'll um, end up um, not learning anything, just repeating the same stuff, and sort of turn into crackpots who would just annoy everybody. So there is a danger in studying primes if you're not really interested in the actual material, but but more interested in, hopefully in the fame or the ego part of it. Um, now, if you're an amateur who is genuinely interested in, in studying primes and maybe not so interested in the fame part, um, there's a lot of fun things you can do. You can do a lot of computations. You can ask questions. There's a lot of recreational math topics that come up. And some of these amateurs actually provide a lot of useful information for for mathematicians. In some cases, they've helped make um, tables of various results that we use. Sometimes they ask questions that we, we get interested in ourselves, and 
a sort of unique ways of looking at things. So, so there's a place for amateurs in the study of primes, um, but we don't need amateur proofs of the twin prime conjecture because they're almost inevitably um, wrong. Um, the one trouble with amateurs is that they're always um, difficult to publish your work, and so they're often trying to publish it, but they um, frequently um, have a tough time doing that. So um, finally, I want to talk about on why primes always seem to fool everybody, fool amateurs, fool professionals. And um, the first reason is that often primes are actually um, pretty easy to figure out what they're doing. You can experimentally see it, and it's obvious what the answer is. And yet, seeing how they do it doesn't actually give you any clue on how to prove that they're doing it. So as an example of that, we have um, the twin prime conjecture. I wrote some twin primes up here. Um, the conjecture is that there's infinitely many twin prime pairs, primes that differ by two, um, but we, no one knows how to prove that there are infinitely many. If you actually look at it on a computer, you'll actually find that there's even an asymptotic formula for the number of twin primes up to x, and you can see that this formula is right. It's, it's absolutely clear. Everywhere you look, Every time you test it, it's going to test out perfectly well. But we just don't get any clue on how to prove it, any of these things. So um, on the other hand, another thing about primes is often they have behavior that is really hard to see. We just don't know the answer at all. So an example of that is um, if you try to find large gaps between consecutive primes, sort of the opposite of twin primes. In that case, we just don't know how far apart consecutive primes can be. And if you try to actually look for them with a computer, it's like trying to find a needle in a universe of haystacks. It's incredibly difficult to find these large gaps. We have some conjectures, and it's just impossible to even get good you know, numerical information to see if the conjectures make sense or not. So, um, so sometimes primes are easy to see what they're doing. Sometimes it's hard to see what they're doing. Um, another thing about primes is that sometimes the problems aren't really that hard, but we don't know it. So there's an example from 2000. Um, Daniel Shu proved that there's infinitely many strings of congruent prime numbers. So what this means is that, um, for example, you can find a thousand consecutive number, prime numbers, and every one of them ends in the same digits, like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it's actually, you can actually prove that you could find a thousand or a million or 10 million primes all ending with those numbers. But you would think that would be extremely hard, but actually it turns out it's only pretty hard. It wasn't actually um, impossibly hard to prove that. Um, and finally, there's um, some problems in primes that computation doesn't help at all and theoretical work doesn't help at all either. You just have certain heuristics um, where you think, you sort of can guess an answer, but you can't actually check it um, theoretically, and you can't check it experimentally. An example of this is what we call the jumping, the jumping champion problem, which is what's the most commonly occurring difference between consecutive primes. And for all numerical purposes, the answer seems to be six, but we actually think that the differences are actually growing, but we have no proof of this. We have no real experimental evidence to, to prove it either. So primes always are going to be a um, um, challenging problem. It's always going to be fun to work on them. It's not going to be, we're not going to get progress like we've had in the last few years, we, where we proved that there are, um, we've now proved there are infinitely often primes that are bounded by 246, it's not the twin prime conjecture, but it's, it's really an amazing result. So, um, so you have to be patient in this field and um, sort of enjoy what you can get with it. Thanks.